so this is a video basically just giving you an overview of chapter seven. <clears throat> so kind of a what what's important, what what's the main topics to focus on for chapter seven. Uh, in the first part of chapter seven, you had online lectures. So the, the written lectures is what I mean by online lectures. Um, basically what you need to know are the four properties of gases. And that's pressure, volume, the amount of gas, and temperature. The other thing also coming from that written lecture are your pressure units. And there's actually nothing new there, no new concepts, just new conversion factors. Um, so it still follows by the same rules that we learned in chapter one, um, but basically you're looking at um, conversions. of your pressure units. So main ones to focus on, we have atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, tor, and those really are, are the important ones. Kilopascal is probably in there um, as well, but those are kind of the, the more common ones. Then the really big point of chapter seven, if you were going to focus on just one thing from chapter seven, this would be it. Okay. And that is the ideal gas law. Now that's not to say I'm not going to test or ask questions on the other stuff. Um, but really, if you can get the ideal gas law, you'll have most of chapter seven um, basically determined. Okay, and remember it's an equation that you need to know. So you need to know and memorize that PV equals NRT. Okay. So remember I suggest that whenever you're reading a question about gases, you start seeing pressures and temperatures and volumes. Okay, remember I suggest to write down, kind of make yourself a list. Okay, and fill in each value as you go. So what this helps with, um, basically what you're going to be looking for, um, there's kind of a general pattern. Once you do enough problems, you'll start to see. Okay, usually um, if a pressure is given, basically what you're going to be doing is a pressure unit conversion. And in general, you're going to want to always go uh, convert those units to atmospheres. Okay? That way you only have to work with one R value. When you're given volumes, usually the conversion that you're going to have to do is milliliters to liters. Okay. By the way, this um, conversion here, this stems from section 7.2. This conversion between milliliters and liters, this is a metric conversion. So remember your uh, metric prefixes back in chapter one. Um, and hopefully you'll get this one memorized really quickly if it's not already. But you have a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter. That's by far the most common uh, conversion that you'll make for volumes, um, actually both in chapter six and, or excuse me, chapter seven and in chapter eight and chapter ten. Uh, N, your amount of gas, usually you're going to be given grams and you're going to want to convert to moles and that's from chapter six and that's your molar mass and you get that from the periodic table. R value, 
Okay. Even though there's multiple R values out there, I recommend that you focus just on one. Okay, it, it uh, reduces confusion. Basically, the, the R value that I would use is the one that uh, is based off of atmospheres. So 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres divided by moles times Kelvin. Our temperature is almost always going to be given to you in degrees Celsius, and you're going to want to convert that to Kelvin. Basically, you are going to take your degrees Celsius plus 273 to get your Kelvin. Okay, and that's uh, from chapter two. Again, the R value, I suggest um, that you always use this one. So this is constant. And basically, we never want to change it. So it's kind of a general layout um, for working through ideal gas law problems. Okay, you'll be given three of the four properties and asked to solve for uh, the fourth one. And generally, you'll be given these values in some unit that you're going to have to convert. Next part of chapter seven that's important for us is Dalton's law. Right, his law of partial pressures. Basically, we have P total is equal to the partial pressure of one gas plus the partial pressure of a second gas plus the partial pressure of a third, and so on and so forth for however many uh, gases you have. And then kind of one last thing. Um, actually deals with the ideal gas law more, uh, but that's our molar volume. And that was where we had 22.4 liters of our gas is equal to one mole of our gas. And we had to make sure that we must be at STP, meaning we have to be at 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere. And we have to be at both of those in order to be able to use this. And this is just a shortcut. You can always plug in your values of 273 Kelvin into temperature and one atmosphere into pressure into your ideal gas law um, in order to do this calculation. This is just a shortcut, kind of uh, decreases the amount of calculations you have to do.